All right, boys. Put the guns down. I'm a police officer. <laughs> what do you know? Rent a cop from up at the college. <laughs> you ain't even a real pig. gun either? Now, how's anybody supposed to know you're a cop? You gotta wear this badge where folks can see it. Hmm? I'm gonna pin this to your nose. Okay, boys. Let's get on with it. Coach register. Oh. Yeah. Oh, move! Just fine. You look good. You look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Everything looks beautiful. That's where you'll be working. Green. Lots of green. How's Quartz? In the hospital. What? Damn fool got his leg broke. Well, how did it happen? Get in the car. I'll tell you about it. Under there? Oh, <laughs> hey, Jim! Hey! Hey! God damn it. Hey, you made it. Huh? Hey, how about that? But I'll be out by tomorrow. You wouldn't have been in here in the first place if you hadn't made that asshole play. Well, you know it is with me. Once a cop, always a cop. Gee, good to see you out. Good to be out. Sit down, sit down. Let me let me look at you. <laughs> Hey, by God, <laughs> you look just like an ex-con. <laughs> I am. Oh, by the way, you can start the college any time you want. Sooner the better. Well, you got the midnight to 8 a.m. shift, and it's a horseshit job, Jim. Same as yours. Hey, hell, I'm a chief. I got me a car, got me an office. Don't have to wear no monkey suit. And you're hated. Well, I had to do something, Jim. Damn farm was eating up all my retirement pay. You see, Jim, I was born down here. Hell, in those days, a farmer could make out, but not. Mr. Willinger, you get back in bed. Yes, ma'am. See you, Chief. Same time next month. Bye. Bye. Jimmy, what are you doing here? 
What happened? Could I talk to you for a few minutes, Miss Thorpe? Yeah, sure. Come on. You Mr. Slade? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'll be with you in a minute. Call me back as soon as he gets off the line. I'm sorry about this, Jimmy. Look, you go back to work and I'll take care of it. Okay? Stay cool. Thank you, Mr. Thorpe. Mr. Slade, you can come in now. Pull up a chair. It's fresh. No, thanks. Cigarette? Thank you, no. Well, how does it feel to be out? Feels good. You'll be staying with the Willingers? For the time being, yes. Nice people. House court's getting on. It's fine. He'll be home today. He's a brave man. Hello? Yes, Jack, I want to talk to you very much. Jimmy Gill was just in here. Listen, Jack, I was there. No, not later, right now. Damn it. Be back in a minute. deputy of yours roughed up Jimmy Gill. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, I will not wait a minute. You should see that kid's face. Yeah, he probably got smart at Virgil's a sadist, and you know it. God damn it. Virgil's got to do his job. Anytime anyone spits on the sidewalk, you roused one of my people. Car 22 is on the horn, Sheriff. All right. Christ's sake, Linda. Now, we ain't talking about, uh, what's his name? Martin Luther King? That kid, Jimmy Gill, been up for armed robbery. He's also on parole. Hello, hello. And he has the same rights, if not the same privileges, as any other citizen. OK. OK. I'll look into it. All right, Jack. But I'm warning you, if your people keep harassing my people, I'm going to take it upstairs. Have a nice day. That's what happens when they put a broad in a man's job. Broad my ass. Got a bigger pecker than you have. I thought I'd come back later. I know. I'm sorry. We can talk now. Mrs. Thorpe, I think I can save you a little time. I know the rules. Immediately upon your release, report to your parole officer. I have. Only with the permission of your parole officer can you leave the county of your residence or change your address. Any change in employment must be approved by your parole officer. You shall not consume alcoholic beverages to excess. You shall not possess, use, or traffic in narcotic drugs. You shall not possess, use, or have under your control any deadly weapons or firearms. Wait a minute, where are we going? To catch my bus. You shall not operate any motor vehicle without a valid driver's license and the written permission of your parole officer. And that, Mrs. Thorpe, about covers it. Except for one thing. You shall not associate with former inmates of penal institutions or individuals of bad character. I guess I'll have to make new friends, won't I? I think you will. See ya. Good 
morning, Jim. Good morning, Sam. Cold night, wasn't it? Damn cold. Nights like that, Jim, you ought to stretch out on one of them cots in the boiler room. If I did, somebody sure as hell steal the school. <laughs> <laughs> And thou shalt not enter into heaven anything that defile it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The nakedness of thy father, or the nakedness of thy mother, shalt thou not uncover. She Mr. is thy mother. Thou shalt not Mr. uncover Ewing, her nakedness. Turn that down. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is wickedness. The it's nakedness the of thy sister, That's daughter the of thy word, father, Mr. Oh, or yes. daughter of thy mother. There's been some complaints Even from the girls' their dormitory. Nakedness, Them's the thou senator that teased the word. Uncover. Thank you. Damn the whores. At. A damn fool. No reason not to stay in shape. No, but you might fall on your ass and break your other leg. The hell I will, old buddy. I'm going to be back on the job next week. You watch this. Morning, sir. You're new here? Yes, sir. My name is Slade. I started Tuesday. I'm Dr. Pritchett. How long has it been since you checked this building? About an hour ago, in my regular rounds. I was just opening up for the day. I noticed that door. Well, it seems somebody's broken in here. The tape recordings are missing. Are you sure? Yes, I locked them in the desk. It seems somebody's stolen them. I'll notify the sheriff's office. Oh, no, no. I, uh, I'd rather you wouldn't. Dean Collins doesn't like to have police on the campus. They, uh, they can be a very disturbing influence. Mr. Willinger's always been able to deal with this sort of thing. Actually, the tapes had no value. I, I don't know why anyone would want to steal them. What kind of tapes were they, sir? Well, my department offers psychological counseling. Not as complex as psychotherapy, but the same technique. You see, if a student doesn't have an appointment, he can uh, get things off his chest on tape whenever he has the urge. There were three tapes left here yesterday. Have you played them? Well, unfortunately, no. I had some papers to grade last night. Did you know whose tapes they were? Yes, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I've jotted their names down here someplace. Wait a minute. Uh, yes. Here they are. Maybe one of them changed their mind. What do you mean? Didn't want you to play the tape, so we took all three to avoid suspicion. Oh, I doubt it. They know all they'd have to do is call me, and I'd destroy the tape without listening to it. Damn it, I've got an early class this morning. They'll have to be notified, of course. Well, maybe I can be of some help. Would you like me to tell them for you? Well, that would be most helpful. Thank you. Doctor? Oh, shit! Did you tell anyone you made it? No, I don't go around telling people I need psych counseling. How about your boyfriend? Harry? He doesn't even know I made it. Did you talk about Harry on the tape? He is all I talked about. Oh, my God, now it's going to be all over campus, and, oh, Jesus, Harry will kill me. Oh, shit. Those tapes were supposed to be confidential. What the hell do I care? It's all bullshit anyway. 
You know why I made those tapes? Because I like to put that phony Pritchett on. You think I'm worried about that mini-skirted little cheerleader letting that Neanderthal fullback baller in the backseat of his hopped-up Pontiac? Well, it just turns me on to blow smoke up Pritchett's ass. Once I told him I was queer for diseased owls, and would you believe it, but that creep bought it. Mark Antony. Excuse me, sir. I really can't see anybody breaking a lock just to get my tape. Was the lock broken? I'm psychic. You don't seem very upset by the theft, Miss Claymore. I'm not. It was mostly poetry, my own. I thought Dr. Pritchard might learn something about me from it. Miss Claiborne, I think it was your tape the thief was after. Why do you say that? You're much too cool. The other two students took it hard. I have to believe that nobody wants anything as intimate as a talk with a psychologist exposed. Amazing, Mr. Holmes. I think there was more than poetry on your tape, and that you know who took it. Fuck off. Natalie Cleveland, huh? Philip Cleveland's daughter, state senator. Pretty near runs the state. Supposed to be next in line for governor. Loaded. Maybe there's a blackmail angle. <sighs> Jim, them tapes is gonna turn out to be kid stuff. Hell, man, <laughs> this is Jordan. It ain't Chicago. Morning. Don't get up. This is a wholesome little domestic scene. A joy to a parole officer's heart. You're just in time for lunch. Fresh trout. No, thanks. This visit is official. I'm supposed to check out Mr. Slade's living quarters. Oh, Jesus, Judy. Get rid of the heroin and them broads. <laughs> Come on in. Who's her husband? Ain't one. Divorced. She from around here? Chicago. Chicago? Mm hmm. Oh, she come here about a year ago. <sighs> Who's she living with? You dig her, don't you? Well, don't you? Well, as far as I know, <sighs> she lives alone. What a waste. I agree. Here's a little present for her. Where does she taste these? <laughs> yeah, I caught 30 of them last week. And what the hell came with the price of meat for you? Yeah. Thanks. Are you sure you won't stay for lunch? No, thanks. Hey, are we gonna get to keep him? Well, for the time being. I'll take a rain check on the lunch. Anytime. Well, that's what you're missing. I caught them beauties last week. Now, if you let them thaw, don't refreeze them. Cook them. Yes, I will. Bye-bye, Judy. Bye. Mr. Slade? How's it going? Fine. Got my driver's license. Good. Still need your written permission, though. Go ahead and drive. I'll mail it to you. How's the job? It's OK. <laughs> Not exactly like police work, is it? No, ma'am. It's a night watchman. Made any friends? Met a few people. Any female? Just you. You're due at the office on Tuesday. I'll see you then. Yes, ma'am.
Come on, Natalie, get in. I've got to wait a while. Natalie, I got a midterm in the morning. Now, will you get in? There's somebody I've got to see. What have you been doing for the last hour here? Dreaming of a white Christmas. Okay, Claiborne, who is he? None of your business. supposed to be back on the campus by 12. You get a fink on me? I should. Bastard. Hey, hey, pour me another. You do and I'll break your arm. Now, what are you doing in town at this hour? Tell me, Dick Tracy. You're after that stolen tape. Did you get it? Why don't you tell me who took that tape? No. No. All right, no more questions. Come on, I'll drive you home. You've got to be in by 12, and I've got to be to work. Or we're both in trouble. Yes, sir. What? Is my man there? Listen, Jim, I'll notify the sheriff's office. You stand by till Casey gets there. What is it? Who has been killed? My God. Mrs. Betty showed us, Mr. Slade. She discovered the body. I know you had a shock, Betty, but if there's anything you can tell us. I I came to wake Natalie. We had we had an early class. And she didn't answer when I knocked. So I tried the door, and it was unlocked, so I came in. And I found her like that. <laughs> How well did you know Miss Claiborne? Well, I suppose I knew her as well as anybody. 
Up until a few months ago, I was her roommate. She was a moody girl. Strange. In what way? I don't know. She wouldn't talk much about herself. You want to go to your room, Betty? You are her roommate? Yes. Why did you leave? Natalie asked me to. It wasn't mean or anything like that. She just wanted more privacy. Did she have any boyfriends? She saw a lot of one of the boys here, Arthur King. Anybody else? If there was somebody else, she never mentioned him. But she never let a boy come up to the room. Who's Waldo Mason? One of our professors, uh, he teaches law. The sheriff is on his way up, Miss Childress. He'll want to ask you a few questions, but don't you be frightened. I sent for Mr. Slade. Where? Well, Slade? One of Linda Thorpe's parolees, Chicago cop, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, I heard about you. We're aware of Mr. Slade's record. Who else is here tonight? Just the janitor. And the gardener comes on about six in the morning. Dig him up, will you, Bernie? Yes, sir. Sure let those kids run wild. Ten to one, that snail's knocked up. You check that out, Doc. Just one, please, Sheriff. Get him out of here. Close the door. How'd you happen to find him? I already told Mr. Slade. Well, you can go. Don't get lost. I'd like to talk to you later. All right, honey. Let's start from the beginning. I'm off now. You wanted to talk to me? Yeah, sit down. Come on, sit down. Now, you tell us about that stuff. They just some rags I picked out of a trash barrel to clean up with. Mm -hmm. You notice that stuff's been poured over a lot? What would they make of that in big city? I guess the same thing you'd make of it, Sheriff. Take a look at that. I read the good book, and I preach the gospel when the spirit moves me, and I'm innocent of any crime in the sight of the Lord. Sit down and shut up. He's a lay preacher, one of them crackpot churches we've got around here. On some religious literature in his junk. Some not so religious. That's the, the filth they use to corrupt the minds of American youth. I show it to my congregation and denounce the sinners who peddle it. No, I bet you do. I bet you boys sit around and Cluck your tongues and get bug-eyed and work yourselves up in a good holy sweat. As God is my witness. Well, you're gonna need him. 
found his prints all over the murder room. Wouldn't that figure, Sheriff? You mean him being the gent? That's right. Mm -hmm. After snails in that door, found him swiping their underwear after they hung it out to dry. I guess you caught yourself a dirty old man. Mm -hmm. No, I caught myself a murder. No! You did yourself a little window shopping in that dorm last night. There's a light on in the Claiborne girl's room because she was reading. The harlot room? Yeah, you had your eyes on that girl. I mean, she looked all honey and innocent on the outside. You knew that her mind and her body were as full of sin as Satan's heart, huh? So you went up, knock on the door, told her you were there to fix the plumbing. You probably had a wrench in your hand. Make it more convincing. So she let you in. And you made your pitch. But she called you a raunchy pervert. Not the Lord's good right hand. <laughs> And then she screamed. You cold cocked her with a wrench. You gave her the punishment, good Lord intended. No. Can you? No. Take him in, bro. Well, all we need is the wrench. We'll turn up somewhere. Go now, Sheriff. Yeah. You don't think that's a man? No, I don't. Ten to one he is. You got a bet, Sheriff. Just don't underestimate Casey. He ain't no fool. He's not going to go to trial without tying the janitor to the murder weapon. He hasn't found one. Casey's a mean bastard. If he has to, he'll plant a wrench with a janitor's prints on it. I don't believe Ewing did it. Maybe not. You never know. What do you make of this? What the hell is that? I found it in the Claiborne girl's room. It's a poem. I copied it. What does it mean? I was afraid you wouldn't ask me that. You two sound just like the old days. You know how it is, honey. Once a cop. Always a cop, I know. That's how you broke your leg. And that's how you can break your parole. Jim, she's right. I keep forgetting. Well, don't. And if you say once a cop, once again, I'm going to hit you with this pot. <laughs> Arthur King? Yeah? I thought you might like to have this. What is it? An unfinished poem of Natalie Claiborne's. This isn't her handwriting. I copied it from a notebook in a room. I thought it might be meant for you. Why me? It was written to a lover. I understand you saw a lot of her. Mister, uh, have you ever heard of the generation gap? Yeah. Well, it just got wider. Fuck off. What Natalie told me to do. Look, what is this bullshit? What are you after? A killer? The sheriff's got her killer. I don't think so. I think it was ever she was writing this poem to. Well, she sure as hell wasn't writing it to me. Whoever killed her, I'd sure like to nail him. Why? And what's it to you? You're no cop. Of course, I have it, I guess. There's something about that kid. She seemed lost. How well did you know her? You mean, was I bawling her? Yeah. The answer is no. No one was getting to Natalie, not that way. How about this, uh, this Janus? Janus. The Roman god with two faces. Whoever she was writing this to. The traitor. And, uh, Mytilene? Middling. Greek, I think. Natalie was hooked on mythology. You drive a, a red van, I believe. Yeah, with a yin-yang uh, flag. 
I drove Natalie home the night you stranded her in Jordan City. Where did you go afterwards? Back here, crammed for a midterm. Alone? Uh, yeah. That's bad, son. No alibi. What's your alibi? You drove her home the night of the murder? Yeah. You were the last one to see her? You won't like this, but you'd make one hell of a cop. Thanks for the information. Professor Mason? Yes? I wonder if I could... Uh... Oh, you're Slade. You're the new man. Well, come on in. Come in. Dean Collins and I were chatting about you last night at the faculty meeting. You have a very interesting background. You're investigating the Claiborne girls' killing? The sheriff is investigating the case. <laughs> yes, I understand. Perfectly. Now, I'm something of an amateur sleuth myself, you know. I read the newspapers. I look for clues between the lines. Like that book. You're wondering how that got there. No, I know how it got here. What I was wondering was why Betty Childers took it out of Natalie Claiborne's room and how it got into Natalie Claiborne's room in the first place. <laughs> Excellent. Coffee? No, thanks. Well, go on. Do go on. Let's see your deductive powers. This place looks like a, a co-ed trap to me. Natalie's been here. You entered this book. Betty saw the book in Natalie's room this morning and realized that it tied you into Natalie. She was afraid the sheriff might spot it, so she brought it back to you. In fact, she cared so much about you that she was crying just now as she left. She was jealous. By God, regular PhD of a night watchman. Listen, I teach law mostly, but also criminology and penology. Those are my real interests. Now, how about you giving a couple of guest lectures to some of my classes? It'd be a breeze for you. Make them question and answer sessions, if you'd like. Professor, you yeah. been playing around with Betty Childers? <laughs> no gentleman would answer that question. You just did. Touche. How about now? <sighs> oh, Mr. Slade, I am a connoisseur of young girls. Not statutory rape, young, but young. However, it was Natalie who chased after me. She was in love with you? No, 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 hell no. I had some crazy idea I might be her father. Father? I don't think I want to get into that. You started the game, Professor. So I did. Does that oblige me to finish it? Natalie's mother and I, 20 years ago, were students here. She was quite a swinger. She left the college to marry Philip Claiborne and gave birth to Natalie and killed herself not too long afterward. Could you have been Natalie's father? No, I'm afraid not. The dates make that quite impossible. That's the craziest hang-up I ever saw. In my judgment, not so much that Natalie wanted me to be her father. She wanted Philip Claiborne not to be. Hated him. Hated him. Wouldn't take a cent of his money. Lived on a trust fund. Her mother left her. Any of this helping you? Professor. This painting. Signature K.M. You know whose it is? Well, Carl Mannerman. He's the local Rembrandt. He teaches some part-time art classes, runs an arty, farty little gallery down in Jordan City. I gather you don't think the janitor killed Natalie. No, I don't. Any idea who? You, maybe. Why me? Natalie made a tape for Dr. Pritchard. If she named you on it as her lover, I 
measure to play hell with your academic career. Yeah, that's rather loose talk. And you could get to be quite a nuisance, Mr. Slade. Allow me to give you a little free legal counsel. As an ex-cop, I'm sure you know that criminal libel is a felony. And you are an ex-con, and you are on parole. Thanks for the information, Professor. And of course, for the advice. Slade was with the Claiborne girl night of the murder? No. Well, neither did I. He never said a damn thing to me about it. Did you ask him? Oh, come on now, Linda. You know better than that. He should have told me. He's an ex-cop. He knows about that. What's the difference if the janitor did it? Well, I'm just telling you up front that when I get around to Slade, I don't want any squawks from you about rousting your people. Miss Lamont. Sure. Ports, Linda Thorpe. Has Jim Slade left yet? He's not due until six o'clock, but I wanted to have a word with him first. It'll keep till he gets here. Okay, see you soon. Problems? Oh, the usual. This is a pleasant surprise. What are you doing down here? Well, something not so pleasant. I uh, just paid my taxes. You are coming by later, aren't you? Oh, of course. Hello. Hello, am I late? Not a bit. Eddie Lamar, Jim Slade. Mr. Slade? Lamar's. I passed your place. Next time, drop in. I'll buy you a drink. Thank you. I will. See you later. Bye, Eddie. Let's walk. He's a good-looking man. Isn't he? Boyfriend? He's married. Boyfriend. I like him. I've been worried about you. Casey says you were with the Claiborne girl the night of the murder. That's right. She was stoned. I drove her back to the dorm. Great. I would seen the least I could do. Mr. Slade, being a good Samaritan is a luxury a parolee can't afford. Especially with a mixed-up kid like Natalie Claiborne. You knew her? I was her probation officer for three months on a marijuana wrap. I handle things like that for the school. Dean Collins likes to keep it out of the sheriff's office. Did you get to know her well? Not really. She never talked about herself much. Casey's going to give you trouble. And if it gets too rough, I want you to come to me. Thank you. I will. Is that all? <laughs> yes, I think so. Good night. Good night. Yes, Mr. Slade, I've been teaching at Jordan for the past 20 years. And I've been painting Jordan co-eds in the nude even longer than that. Ever since I was an art major. But what you really want to know is whether it was at their request or mine. Now, am I right? No, sir. That would be none of my business, Mr. Miniman. Drink? No, thanks. Artists, Mr. Slade, do not always have affairs with their moms. I painted Natalie because she had a Rubenesque body, full and satisfying, like her mother's. I also painted 
Well, we were students here. New. Did Natalie know that? Now you're going to ask me, Mr. Slade, did I have an affair with Natalie's mother? No, sir. Yes, but it did cross your mind, didn't it? As a matter of fact, Natalie was quite obsessed with the thought. It turned out that that was the real reason she came to pose for me. It fascinated her to think that I might be her father. You ever had that problem? No, sir. I didn't think so. Good night, Mr. Slade. That's 975, Mrs. Thorpe. Will that be charged? Yes, please. 419 Elm, I believe. Mm-hmm. For me? Where's your car? Oh, well, I only live a block from here. I walk to work. I'll walk you home. Which way? How'd you ever get into parole work? <laughs> How'd you ever become a policeman? My father was a cop and his father before him. You like it? Well, that's what I did best. I never thought of doing anything else. No dreams of fame and fortune. You don't have to stop a detective sergeant unless you shoot a man. That doesn't seem like you. You're a cop. You live 24 hours a day with violence. You get used to violence. Yes, you do. I was married for three years to a gangster. You name the racket, Jerry was in it. Must have been tough. Not at all. I knew when I married him. I knew from the beginning. There was plenty of money. We lived the good life. I liked it. But you divorced him. He was an animal. Nineteen Elm, Leroy. So I drifted for a while. London, Paris, New York, Las Vegas. And I ran out of money. Then I decided I'd better get to work. Parole officer is a point of here, not civil service. And I had some influential friends, so my past associations didn't get in the way. <laughs> I think they figured I had so many criminal friends that I'd know how to deal with them. Here we are. Thanks for the company. Good night. You know what would be nice? If you invited me in for a drink. All right, Jim. in there. Hit the latch, Charlie. Jesus, Charlie, I think you killed him. Well, you can see. His arms like a worm. Juicy, too. In the bedroom where you're supposed to. Me personally, Roy? Block A, okay. I'm first. You and Jess flip a coin for second. I'm first.
you all right? Hmm? Okay. Let's go inside. I'm going to call a doctor. Oh, that's all right. Give me this. Just a cut. Sit down. Those are the same three that beat up Quartz in the holdup at Lamar's. They got a bracelet from me that night, and I saw a woman in the market with it. She must have got my address from the clerk. I think they were after me. You? Maybe I've been asking too many questions. What have you been up to? Talking to a few people about the... about the Claiborne murder. Listen to me. You're not a cop anymore. I want you to go to Casey and, and, and tell him everything you know and, and stop behaving like a goddamn fool. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I haven't even thanked you for what you did. Nice of you. Give me that drink you promised me. Yes. You sit here and um, I'll get dressed. Take you to the hospital and get that cut closed. And then you're going to Casey. Can't say I blame. And then it's good looking broad. I want them guns dusted for prints. Wait a minute, Slade. Casey, the mass holes called each other by their first names. Leroy, Cash, and Charlie. Like they weren't afraid of being made, like they had connections. Ah, oh, damn you, Slade. Ain't no hood's got connections of this kind. You know, I'm gonna lock you up. Go ahead. I'll probably be a lot safer. Well, I damn well will, unless you've got the right answers to a lot of questions. Where'd you take the Claiborne girl after you left the bar? Senator Claiborne's here, Sheriff. I'll get you there. You know where to find it. Senator Claiborne, I'm Sheriff Casey. My secretary, Mr. Swanson. Right. The janitor you've arrested, I want to see him alone. Yes, sir. Mr. Swanson. Sheriff's been over this place with a fine tooth comb. Yeah, I know. He just gave me permission to go through all this stuff. Maybe I can be of some help. What are you looking for? Well, you never know what's going to turn up. Like a tape recording? I think you better have a talk with my boss. What do you know about that tape? It's all right, go ahead. I believe your daughter was murdered for it. So do I. And I don't believe it was the janitor. Do you know what was on that tape? No, sir. Just the sheriff? I don't think so. You don't seem like a mere night watchman. My name is Slade, sir. I'm an ex-cop homicide. Retired. Busted. I did time on parole. I shot a man. In the line of duty? In my wife's bed. I got a letter from my daughter. Postmark the day before she was killed. She was upset about something she'd put on a tape that was stolen. She was afraid the thief would try to blackmail me. Natalie got into trouble when she was 15. I had the option of letting her pay the penalty or buying her out of it. I bought. 
but it's the kind of fix my political enemies could make much of. I want that tape. I don't care how I get it. If it's evidence in a murder case, Senator, the tape will have to be turned over to the DA. I'll worry about the DA. It's Natalie's father. That tape is now legally my property. I'm not satisfied with the way this case has been handled. I want you to work on it. I can't do that, sir. I'm a parolee. Mr. Slade, I have considerable influence in this state. And I can be a generous man when I get what I want. What time are you off duty? 8 a.m., sir. I'm staying at Colonel Kravitz's cottage on the lake. I'll expect you. Good night. Mr. Slade. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. <clears throat> well, you're going to accept now, aren't you? Did you hear what I said in there? I'm not sure that's wise, Mr. Slade. I happen to know there's a lot of money in this. A lot more than the senator implied. Money? <laughs> I thought that would interest you. I suggest you and I get together, have a little cup of coffee, have a little talk. Just between the two of us. Hmm? Mr. Swanson, I don't know if you're on the take or just testing me for the senator. But either way, I don't like it. When does a legitimate secretary carry an automatic? You wait until the senator hears about this. I won't tell him. Morning. You mean good evening. Where's Judy? Playing bridge. Sleep well? Not too bad. Your headache better? Two of them. Just how would you like your eggs, Mr. Slade? All right, Quartz, let's have it. Well, let's see, sir. <clears throat> your number of phone calls. Linda Thorpe called to express her concern for your health. And Chef Casey called and said he would be desolated if you left town. <laughs> And Senator Claiborne phoned. He was deeply disappointed that you couldn't make your appointment this morning. And I haven't heard from them three lovely assholes that you spent such a lovely evening with last night, though I'm sure that their get well cards is on the way. <laughs> and then there were calls from three more of your conquest, Arthur King, Professor Mason, and Dr. Pritchett. What the hell did they want? It seems their pads were torn apart, and they figured that it was you looking for that tape. Call Metterman, call? No, why? Can I borrow your car? Sure. Jim, what's going on? Jim!
Mr. Lamar. Mr. Lamar. Yes. I'm sorry to trouble you, Mr. Lamar, but I've been trying to reach Mrs. Thorpe and there's no answer at her house. I thought you might know where I could find her. Well, I'm looking right at her. Linda, it's for you. Hello? Linda, I'm in a jam. Could you meet me in front of the, uh, Clemens Motel in 30 minutes? All right, Jim. He's in some kind of trouble. I'm sorry, I have to go. Can I be of any help? Thank you. I think I can handle it. Be back if it's not too late. Your motor. Your lights. Linda, I'd like to borrow your car. Where's yours? Mine's too easy to spot. Jim, are you at this again? Somebody tried to kill me tonight. They got the right car, but the wrong guy was in it. I'm safe as long as they think I'm dead. I've got to lay low. This time you're going straight to Casey, and I'm going with you. Like hell I am. You're making me sound like a broken record, but you're an ex-con on parole. I break my parole, I do three more years. Tonight, I damn near did no more years. Jim, please, if you go on like this, I, I can't help you. I'm sorry, Lynn, but it's my neck and I've got to do it my way. I'm not going to work tonight. All right. Thanks for coming down. I'm sorry I broke your date. Date? Well, I called you uh, with Eddie Lamar. And that bothers you? I guess I'm old-fashioned. Mr. Slade, you're a damn fool. Hello? Yes, Eddie. No, no, it's too late for that. I'll see you tomorrow. What? Yes, Eddie, I'm going straight to bed.
Morning, Senator. We had an appointment yesterday. I'm afraid it's a little late. It's later than you think, sir. Your boy Swanson is dead. He was burglarizing everybody who knew Natalie. He wanted to hijack that tape and go into the blackmail business for himself. Who killed him? Probably the same people who left this on your mailbox. Blackmail, all right. How much? $250,000 in cash in exchange for the tape. I'm to be at the Jordan City bus terminal at noon. This is our chance to nail them. Yes. Hello? This is Senator Clavin. Who is this? I see. Yes. Yes, I understand. Uh... Mr. Slade, I've decided to handle this myself. Because of that phone call? I'm going to the bank. I want your word you won't follow me. All right, Senator. Can I see that note? The deal's off if I involve anyone else. I think you better go. All right, sir. That's the way you want it. Morning, Sheriff. Didn't hear you knock. Where's your car, Quartz? Oh, gee, it's funny you should ask that. It was stolen last night. Well, how come you didn't report it? What for? Your voice couldn't find a turd in the cow pasture. Well, we found it all right. And a bullet hole in the windshield, blood on the seat. Slade up there. Got a search warrant. You touch that phone, I'll get my shotgun. Your status in here is the same as that of a prowler. Excuse me, please. Oh, yeah. Dean Collins. Yeah, well, he's been a little under the weather, but he'll be back on the job tonight. Who's there? Casey? Yes, sir. I'm at Linda Thorpe's house. Call me back as soon as you shake him. I'll be glad to do that, Dean. Oh, Jack. I'd like to get my car back before your deputy stripped it. Jim, where the hell have you been? That's well, great. Now you can tail him. I can't. I promised him I wouldn't. Well, I didn't. And Claiborne don't know me. But what about your leg cords? Jim, I'm tired of just sitting around on my ass. And don't worry about me. I'll be armed. The note only takes him as far as the bus station. We don't know where it's going from there. Don't worry. I'll stick to him like plaster. All right. Keep me posted. Where do you think you're going with that? Hunting. Yeah, 
Vanceville. Go, Senator. Come on in. Well, the bastard's delivered. Where, sir? Behind the fireplace in one of those roadside parks. I left the money, drove away, came back in an hour. The money was gone. Who's there? Mr. Slade, you've been very helpful. I'm going to have my office send you a generous check for your time and trouble. Got a dead daughter. I can't bring Natalie back, and neither can you. I might be able to bring in a killer if I knew what was on that tape. I think you had better leave. You wanted that tape bad, Senator. But you wouldn't have paid off unless you knew the blackmailer had it. He had to give you some proof of that. Some proof that he knew what was on that tape. And he did was in that payoff note that you wouldn't show me this morning. You touch that note and I'll kill you. I never did believe that story of yours about fixing a rep for Natalie. She wouldn't have hated you for that, and she did hate you. She hated you so much, she tried to convince herself a couple of other guys were her father. I love Natalie. She was the only creature on God's earth I have ever loved. Once I, I thought I loved a stepmother, but I learned to hate her. So did Natalie. The night it happened, I'd been drinking heavily. I did a lot of that in those days. I was in bed. Natalie came in. She took me in her arms to comfort me. I don't know how it happened, but I, I know that I 
started to make love to her. But when I realized what I was doing, I stopped. Do you understand? I stopped. Dr. Pritchett. Why do I dig that little cheerleader? Why do I hate that big fullback? Last night, I... Pay $250,000 for that tape, Senator. But it's not the one you wanted. We've still got that. Casey's got a manhunt going for you. I might as well go in and face him. What happened? I just left Claiborne. He paid off, but he got taken. First, we're going to go home and have some supper. In case he gets his hands on you, God knows when I'll see you again. Mr. Slade. Who's calling? Jim. Arthur King. Hello? Hello, Mr. Slade. I know who Natalie's lover was. The key to her is in that poem she wrote. Tell me. No. You meet me and I'll lay it all out for you. Where are you? Well, you wait there for me. It'll take me about a half an hour. I gotta go. Where? Campus post office. Post office? Oh, the king thinks he knows who Natalie's lover was. Who? He didn't say. He might have something. I'll try to hurry back. Jim, be careful. Well, looky here. I finally caught you with your pants down. Bullshit, I just got here. And suddenly, what the hell are you doing here? I was cruising. Got to call somebody had a shot here. You dead? He's dead. Who 
is he? A student name of Arthur King. I caught him red-handed messing around with a body. King phoned me to meet him here. He was dead when I arrived. Slade, the death rate in this county has tripled since you got here. Von Swanson's body in that motel room. There's a hell of a lot going on. I don't know, but I think you do. But I'm sure as hell gonna find out. You take him in, Virgil. What's the charge? Oh. Book him for assaulting an officer. You take his car down and impound. Here, wait a minute. It's Linda Thorpe's car. Yeah. That's right, Jack. He had my car. Is there a law against that? You haven't a damn thing on him. I'm his alibi. Arthur King phoned him here. I was with him. Now, I want you to release him at once, or I'm going to start making phone calls. You've been sprung. By who? Whom? Mm. Okay, Professor. Who? All I know is I got orders from the sheriff to let you out. I come. You want to stay? <laughs> we were smart to steal a cop car. Like hell you stole it. Where'd you let you take it before he sprung me? <sighs> you see now why we gotta kill him? <laughs> oh, cash. We'll take him back to Nell's place. Go. Turn Virgil's call. Now, you lay off for him till I get back. He's my meat. Nail? So, this is the stallion that done all the damage the other night. He don't look like much to me. You boys ought to be ashamed. Damn it, Nail! You want this half wit to kill him? Leroy said for us to wait. You turn him loose in the barnyard, I'll give you a show. You couldn't whip an old cripple. I'd beat you without even working up a sweat. Cash! You think we all mush brain like Cash? You just are baiting him so we'll turn you loose to fight. We'll just put him on ice till Leroy gets back. Put him in the cellar, boys.
God damn, it's cold. In the cellar. Let's get it over with. Hell, Leroy, he ain't going no place. Your house. I ain't drunk up a storm last night. They didn't hardly give me a drop. But that whole time, I was studying on you. I ain't as dumb as they make out. Sure you're dumb. Virgil gets the gravy, you guys do all the dirty work. He don't neither. <laughs> we got a good deal with Virgil. We can do anything we want to. And we don't get busted just as long as we do a few things for him. Like what? You hold still. I'm gonna bust your arm at the elbow. I'll go just like him. The Royal skin you alive for this. Uh-huh. I studied on that too. They want a cripple for the fight. That's just what I'm fixing to give. <laughs>
geschehen. that bracelet. Now get out of here. You gonna shoot me in the back? I'm gonna count from one to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got a thumbprint off the key to Swanson's motel room. It was yours. You're under arrest. I just killed three men, Casey. I'm in no mood for any of your bullshit. Now, where's Virgil? Well, he's home, I guess. He's off this morning. Show me. outside gas station near the state line. Took a chance letting her go. I figured she'd be easy to spot. Nobody quite like her. I wanted to give her plenty of time to tip off, Virgil. You won't let me in on the rest of them? You'll have it all before the day is out. Now quit gabbing, you're gonna lose it. Wait. You're in very good company. Swanson. What about him? Murder. He killed Arthur King. You want to test on those guns, they'll check out.
Well, Quartz, it's almost over. I had a lot of time to think last night in that cellar. I could tie Virgil in with those rednecks. But what about Natalie, Arthur King, Swanson? Then it hit me. I knew Virgil went out to Metterman's house that night to shoot me, not Swanson. Somebody set me up. And there was only one man who knew I'd gone out there in your car. It was you, Quartz. It was crazy. It didn't make sense. I tried to lose it in the darkness, but it wouldn't go away. So I went back to the beginning to see if I could make it fit. I started with why you went to Lamar's the night it was held up without Judy. It's not your kind of place. Unless you were there for a meeting with one of your partners, Lamar. The holdup was just a bad break. It took you out of action. But with me around, you could still stay on top of every angle. You'd be the first to know if anything went wrong. And I reported to you like an ass-kissing rookie. The jogging is perfect. You came up here early and you stole the tapes and then you jogged. You had those tapes in your car that morning when you did that little circus act for me. When I found Natalie in the bar that night and brought her back to the campus of hysterics, you were tipped off and you came up here to calm her down. I figured you didn't mean to kill her, just scare her. But she threatened to blow the whistle. You lost your head. You hit her with a crutch. You're good with those crutches, Quartz. Damn good. Following Claiborne on the payoff trip, that was a nice touch. It really had me fooled. Unless, after you lost him, you got off the bus, went back to your car, and picked up the money in the roadside park where your note told Claiborne to leave it. It was five o'clock in the morning by then and Cash woke me up. I know I'd had a bad dream. But when we took Claiborne's money bag from Lamar this morning, Casey dusted it for prints. It wasn't a dream, Quartz. They were your prints. Some of his rights. You're making the arrest, not me. He's got a new mate. Seems happier. Yes, they get lonely, even as you and I. What can I do for you, Mr. Slade? Tell me about Natalie Claiborne. Get 
This is the one you're looking for. This is Natalie Claiborne, Doctor. And what I am about to tell you, I have only... So you've heard from Millie Lamar's lawyer? Yes. By the way, shouldn't have bothered. It isn't worth much. Now, how do you like that? I went out and killed three men for it. how to tell you your boyfriend was a blackmailing murderer. But there's one thing that still bothered me. This tape. Not where it was hidden, but who'd gotten close enough to Natalie to get her to make it. It could have been Dr. Pritchard. He could have lied about having played it, faked the burglary. But yesterday morning, Clavin got a call just after I delivered the blackmail note. And all of a sudden, he wanted to deal me out. It was one of the blackmailers. And they were supposed to think I was dead. And I was the only one who knew you weren't. You were Natalie's probation officer. Three months. You're good at getting close to people. close to me in three days. I fell in love. With who? Me? Lady Lamar? Quartz? Natalie? When Arthur King called last night, you knew he was on to you. So you called Lady Lamar after I left, and he got to the kid before I did. Can I make sure one? Thank you. He said he knew who Natalie's lover was. The key was in that phone. Janice was a two-faced lover. He told me that. But I couldn't figure Mitteline. I stopped off at Dr. Pritchett's on my way over here. Mitteline is the modern name for the Greek island of Lesbos, where Sappho and her lesbians did their thing. Dr. Pritchett said that because of the experiences with her father, Natalie could be a setter for a relationship with a woman. I know now that the night that I found Natalie here in town, she'd been to see you. Try to get that tape back. So you called one of your boyfriends, Quartz, and you asked him to shut her up. What took me so long to figure you out was those three killers jumping the both of us here in this house. I didn't know they were working for me. And neither did they. I believe you. Lady Lamar was your front. Virgil was his stooge. When Virgil busted those three hoods for holding up Eddie's place, Eddie dropped the charges and returned for a little strong arm service. By getting rid of me. I never wanted that. Tell me something. Were you and Eddie going to double cross courts? I thought you had all the answers. Everybody was in that bed. The victim, the killer, the front man, me. You were the only one that mattered. Maybe.
They're the best I've seen. Thanks. And you're a smart cop. Unfortunately, a smart cop is still just a dumb cop. All you had to do before you ran around arresting everybody this morning was think one step further. You could have had 250 grand. The tape, which Claiborne would have gone right on paying for. And you could have had me. <sighs> Jesus. That wife of yours must have had it tough up there on that pedestal. You didn't say so, but you were shocked when I told you that I would have stuck with my gangster husband if he treated me decently. What have you got out of all this, Jim? Hmm? Cops pat on the back? Big deal. You kill three bad guys and pinch three more. Oh. Counting you. Me? What have I done? I didn't steal any tapes. I didn't kill that girl. I didn't write any blackmail notes or pick up any payoff money. I didn't shoot Arthur King or Swanson. And I didn't pay those rednecks to lean on you last night. Conspiracy. Maybe. But I'll turn state's evidence and I won't serve a day. manners. Uh, check Claiborne sent you for destroying the tape. What about it? The DA found out you deposited in Judy Willinger's account, Bank of Jordan City. She's going to need it. Uh, sure, but DA don't like it. To hell with the DA. Yeah. He says you being the state star witness and all, the defense is going to have a field day with you giving money to defendant's wife. He doesn't want to put you on the stand. To hell with the DA, or did I say that before? Slade? You don't want to testify against court. Once a cop, always a cop. What the hell's that got to do with it? Casey, you ever notice how lawyers don't like to testify against lawyers? Doctors against doctors? Now, you owe me 10 bucks because the janitor didn't do it. I'll give you 10 to 1 that you don't make much of a witness against Virgil, if you testify at all. Oh, God damn it, Slade. Come on, a shot to some didn't I? In the leg, Casey, in the leg. Not between the eyes or in the heart or anywhere near that badge. Smart cop, Slade. Somebody once told me that a smart cop is still just a dumb cop. How'd you like to be one again? I might be able to do something about that parole. I got Virgil's badge on my desk, nobody pin it on. 
Thanks, Casey. I'll think about it.